In this episode of Paint Society, we're going to roll our Honda S2000 into the booth, discuss some tricks for taping up your car, then we'll apply a sealer, base, and clear coat for a factory finish. What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Today is a special day. We're going to be painting a beautiful S2000. We have the doors and we have the quarter panels left and any second now it should be coming right through the doors and right into the paint booth and check it out. It is ready to go. This is paint day. Let's get ready. First thing we're going to do since the car is so low, I want that car on jack stands so we can get paint nice and even on the bottom side and we're not painting in a low surface where there could be a potential dirt on the ground. So we've already gone ahead, we've blown out the whole booth, we changed our filters to prevent that. But now we just need the car just a little bit higher so we have low profile ramps so that we can use a jack to get it on jack stands. So we're ready to put it on jack stands and using the jack and sometimes you know I just don't know everything so it's always important get someone from the shop help you out knows what to do to put a car up on a lift a few times before so Miguel's gonna help out with that all right which one are we going for that's what happens when you got a short stick that's right boy I fast. Yeah. drop her low All right. Now, before we begin our actual masking, I'm going to make sure I'm using a uh, wax and grease remover on everything and where the tape's going to go. Now, this whole car has been washed, degreased before. Now, we're just going to go ahead and kind of overkill it because it can never be too clean. So, anywhere where I know tape is going to go, I'll go ahead and run some wax solvent, wax and grease remover. All right, so we're going to start our door taping within the door jam. We're going to use a half inch, an inch and a half, some foam, and also some paper. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and tape this jam up first, and then I'll put some six inch paper inside the door jam, and then I'll use my foam tape right over here, right where the uh, door and the quarter panel meet. So I have a nice soft edge. When I'm all done, I can just give a little buff, and you won't even know it's been painted. Okay, so what we have here is six inch paper. And then before that we have our inch and a half. And before that we had um, just our half inch tape. Then we took our foam tape and we lined it right here along the edge. Now we made sure not to stretch it or else it can lift in the little contours here. So nice and easy, nice and smooth all the way. Now we have a soft edge for when our door closes. So now we have a nice even gap you don't want any of the adhesive showing, otherwise that can leave crusty edges. Now this trim right here actually is integrated into the back soft top. Now in order to remove this trim, it's about a 12 hour job, and that's per the Honda instructions, and it really is that long. You have to remove all the back seats, all the components. We figured the best way to do this is to get a special trim tape that is meant for this trim to lift it up just a little bit to get paint underneath it. So when it's all done, you wouldn't even know that it was taped off with this special trim tape. Now we'll leave the link in the description and this trim tape is now uh, comes perforated, which is nice because you can tear it off. And you don't want to work more than a inch and a half, two inch piece anyways. Now it's got a hard uh, edge right here and that's going to go underneath the trim, lift it up, and then you can tape it back. So on our straightaway pieces, we can probably work two pieces at a time. So what we'll do is we'll slide it under and you always come in from the piece that you already have taped, so you slide it in from there, okay? Slide it in, and then we're gonna push it all the way in. So now you have to pull up 
And when you pull up, you don't want to stick it here first. You want to stick it at the lowest point. That way we can get that little small molding that's at the bottom of this trim off the paint. And if you look there, that is the gap that we need. And you see how here it is completely flush with the vehicle. And here there's a gap. That's what I need. Right here at this edge, we can't get the trim tape underneath. It's just too close and there's no space. So we'll run some 3M half inch and then put some precision poly tape right there so we have a nice clean edge. Now I'll run this tape after we go ahead and mask the whole car. It'll be the last thing we put on. We have the whole car taped off all the perimeters, so now we'll spread our plastic and we'll tape it to all the uh, tape that's already down. Our whole car now is masked up and it's ready to be cleaned before we hit it up with sealer. First, we're gonna start with water base. Now this is the water base we use. We put it into a pump sprayer and then we'll spray it on the whole car. I want you to really wet the whole surface down. If you don't, you're gonna miss contaminants and those could be fish eyes. Cleaner the panel, cleaner the paint, cleaner the finish, less buffing. While I'm doing this, I'm still checking to make sure my body work is good all the way to the last moment. If I find something, I'll pull this car right out of the booth and I'll redo it. Now we'll go ahead and use our solvent-based wax and grease remover and a pump sprayer. This removes oils, grease, that type of stuff from an engine that can be contaminants on our surface. We'll once again, get it all wet and glossy, bring those contaminants to the top of the panel. It floats them here. And then what I'll do with my clean rag, not the same one, is I'm gonna wipe them all off. I'm wiping away contaminations. I'm wiping away fish eyes potential areas where the paint does not want to stick and it goes around it and creates what we know as a fish eye. So we have our S2000 right behind us. Now it's our job to put the right coating system on it to give us a superior finish. Now we're not gonna go ahead and jump the base just yet because we wanna use our sealer. Now what is a sealer? A sealer is a thinned out primer that does not get sanded. And it's gonna do two things for us. First off, it's gonna help with little different cut throughs or burn throughs the different layers of the paint when we were sanding. It's gonna bridge the gap and give us one uniform color. Secondly, it's going to help with our base coat coverage. We don't have to put too, we don't have to put too many coats on. Maybe two will cover instead of five or six. Less coats of base means a smoother finish. Now we have our red uh, color build. This can be used as a primer or a sealer depending on how it's mixed. Sealer requires a sealer hardener. We always use slow. Then it requires a reducer. I'm gonna add up to 10% more because it's a hot day and I wanna smooth it out. All right, so before we paint, we gotta hit up our Paint Society shirts. If you wanna get yourself some, go ahead to paintsociety.bigcartel.com. We got a lot of big boy sizes on there as well. Now I'll use my tack cloth three times. I'll use it before sealer, I'll use it before base, and then I'll use it before clear. And we're feeling, is there any surface contamination? Is there anything that is kind of sticking out? Okay, feel it. Not that you can always see it, but you can feel it. Is there any grease left on there? Is the body work good? Still not being afraid to pull it right back out. Now we're ready for our sealer. And every single coat is very important. You see, when the base goes over here and then the clear, it's gonna fall into however the sealer looks. The sealer is gonna fall into whatever these, this prep panel looks like. So did you prep it good enough? Ask yourself that question before because you're gonna only be as good as what the prep is. 
that is 99% of the job. We're just putting a coating on here to show us what your prep looks like. I'm gonna start from the bottom so I can carry it all the way around through the top. If I were to start at the top, then I would come down to the bottom and I couldn't keep that wet edge all the way around. Did you see how I carried it all the way across the panel on the other side? Now I'm gonna pick up that wet edge, move it across the top, and all the way down the bottom so I have no dry spots. This is what your sealer should look like once it's flashed and ready for base coat. It should be a nice satin matte finish all the way around and the surface is super smooth and it's ready for base. We're pushing 93 degrees inside the booth while spraying. Extremely hot, so we need to use the right reducers. Make sure you're using your slow and in our case we have our paint and they're not gonna tell you this in the technical data sheets or even in training, but get yourself some extra slow and put about 10% more in. And what that's gonna do is help that paint stay open longer and lay smoother, not bumpy. Remember, smoother paint, smoother clear, beautiful finish. And now what that's gonna do, the flip side, is gonna, it's gonna take a little bit away from the strength, but not enough to, to even notice. And uh, we should be able to get it covered in about three coats. We got that first coat of base on and it's super smooth. Let's talk about flash times. We wanna allow about at least 10, 15 minutes in between coats. You don't wanna go into that coat until it's dry. Otherwise, it's not gonna cover the way it needs to. So our base is all dry like we just saw. Now we're ready to spray our clear coat finish. And we're going to apply according to technical data sheets, but 1.3, we'll be using a WS400. And since our sealer base are smooth, our clear coat is going to lay even smoother and absolutely stunning and beautiful. Now, we'll be using a high solids clear. It is a beautiful clear. It is amazingly easy to spray, and I absolutely love it. And it's what the whole car has been sprayed in. So we'll do two coats only. That's all we need and we'll put about 10 to 15 minutes in between those two coats. I'm gonna show you the first coat from up above and then we'll take a look at it once it's all sprayed.
Now right behind us, we achieved a beautiful factory style finish with a beautiful flat orange peel in it and it looks fantastic. And there's no reason why any of you right now cannot do the same exact things with the steps in this video and many other videos. What's holding you back? There's nothing. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You sand it down, you redo it. I mean, that's what I'm trying to teach you guys here, that it's not a life or death thing, it's just paint. So guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. Let's check it out. the next episode when we bring the Honda S2000 back into the body shop and start on the hard top as well as getting ready to paint all of the accessories to make this car one beautiful color once again you're not gonna want to miss it <laughs>